Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And today I'm in Scotland, I'm in the heart of the space side. And as you can see, yeah, it's a bit of a drizzling, so you might get a bit of distortion with the uh, water on the lens, but yeah, I have to endure something too because it's really cold in here. Yeah. Behind me is the Ben Riach distillery. We're gonna visit that today and it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, let's go a bit into the history of Ben Riach, which is yeah, a bit of bad, a bit of unfortunate. As the distillery was um, sold pretty regularly, it was uh, mothballed pretty regularly and it was really unsteady production. Um, the latest it was closed was in 2002, whereas Chivers discontinued the production and just yeah, mothballed them. And then Billy Walker bought the distillery in 2004, so only two years of discontinued production. And he made the distillery better, he, he upped the production and he really got into the single malt again. And um, he then sold in 2015 this distillery and two other distilleries to the Brown Foreman Company, which still owns them today. It's very lucky for the distillery because the Brown Foreman Company has access to a lot of casks, a lot of uh, raw materials, and it's really a, a good uh, company to be the mother company of Ben Riach. As Brown Foreman knows that good whiskey needs their time, you can't rush it, and yeah, some other companies might really look onto cash flow, whereas other companies just have a long duration and uh, long yeah, breath uh, for making the whiskey great and then selling it and making a good profitable company out of Ben Riach. So yeah, come with me and find out why Ben Riach is such a great whiskey today. So I'm here in one of the malting floors and this is where the, yeah, the ingredients are being produced. Uh, the malting floors, as their name says, are producing the malt. You take in the barley actually as a grain and you put them into steeping tanks which are actually one floor up, which are big tanks. You fill them with water and you soak the grain of uh, barley with water. And at that point the grain actually decides, yep, I want to grow, I want to become a plant. So what the plant needs is sugar. So it converts the starch into sugar and that's actually why you malt the grain to produce sugar and knock it more sweet. You can try this by buying a bit of malt and a bit of grain and then trying them and you will realize it's much more softer and much more sweeter than the actual grain from the, uh, from the barley. After you've soaked the, the barley, you have to give it time to actually grow. And while you do that, you have to give it a lot of air. So you spread it out very, very evenly on the floor about that thick and then you have to turn it, regularly turn it, two, three, even sometimes four times a day. And at the end of that you still have a little bit of wetness there and you want to stop the process. You don't want a real plant, you just want the, the malt. So what you then need to do is you need to dry it. And you, if you see the distilleries they all have these pagoda shaped roofs and this is the actual chimney for the for the drying floors. So uh, you spread them out on your drying floor and then you decide what kind of whiskey you want to have. Do you want a smoky whiskey or a non-smoky whiskey? Um, when you want to have a non-smoky whiskey, as the Brunriach maltings want to do, then you take hot air and you dry them over hot air. If you want to have a smoky whiskey, you take peat and you burn it and you make it, you actually don't burn it really a really hot fire, but you actually put a bit of water on it so it's really, really dense smoke. And that gives you the peaty malt that ends up in the peat smoky whiskey. Yeah, this is how you make the malt. Yeah, the distillery does about two weeks of uh, malt production from their own maltings and the rest of the malt is actually bought, uh, bought from big malting companies. And the distillery actually buys most of the malt unpeated, but there is uh, sometimes during the year they produce with peated malt and they actually buy two different kind of peated malt, normal peated malt and heavily peated malt. 
So you do have a bit of variation in the Bernier whiskey. I'm really anxious to find out how this variation is and how that affects the taste of the Bernier whiskey. Yeah, a little bit of history here. These molding floors were a bit too big for a small distillery as it was back in the day. So what they did is they actually delivered some malt to the Longmorn distillery and their yeah, business didn't turn out so well in the very early stages of the Benriach distillery. So they had to close at some point, but they still kept going on with the maltings. So the distillery was kind of also a, a malting at some point of time. So yeah. That's the history of the maltings at the Benriach distillery. And let's continue with the production of the whiskey. This here is where the malt is being milled. It starts off in the hoppers over there. They are um, magnetized, so all the metallic uh, products are being taken out. And then it comes down here to the de-stoner. There's a, a little sack there, which is half filled with gravel. So there's actually a bit of gravel coming in through the farmers and some of the malters as well. So uh, the stones would be very, very damaging to the malt mill. So you always have to have a de-stoner there. Then you transport the de-stoned malt up here, weigh it in a special container in batches, and then it's being milled here in the malt mill and you can adjust the different stages to how fine you want to have the malt being milled, yeah. Uh, the batches for one mash ton vary a bit, but they tend to average out at about 5.8 tons. So I'm here in the room with the mash ton. The malted grist is actually transferred to you on your left behind you. It is a conveyor that goes up and ends up in this hopper. So this grist hopper holds the 5.8 tons of grist and it is actually being mashed in a very old traditional way as it falls down and there is a big tube of water coming in and going into the actual masher, which is kind of a, a rake screw thingy that mashes the grist and the water together and then is being fed with a, a screw and a big uh, splash into the mash ton. Um, the mash ton is stainless steel and each Mashing produces about five, uh, 25,000 liters of wort. They have four runs in total, whereas the third and the fourth run contain so little sugar and starch, so they don't really use that for the fermentation, but they store it in a separate tank and use this water during the next run to really get out most of the sugars and the starches from the grist. Yeah. Um, the water temperatures started around 62, something like that, and are increased gradually to get out more and more from the grist. I'm here in the room with the wash bags of Ben Riach. Yeah, they're all stainless steel, as you can see. Um, here are only six of them. There is a door, and that leads to another two, which look a bit older than these are. Um, they're filled with 33. 33,000 liters of wort and then you add liquid yeast to have them ferment. And what is really special about the distillery is that they have a really long fermentation duration. It takes about 100 hours for the, uh, for the, the yeast to do its full work. So they, uh, the yeast is working and after the yeast dies off, there is a few processes post fermentation and it actually changes the flavors and that's what the people here are looking for. A really settled wash with everything done. And there's another reason why you want to have your uh, wash really settled after 100 hours is that everything is really fermented through. If you have a really fast fermentation, you have some fermentation going on in your tubes and your your charger and your wash charger and your, even your still in the end. And that is really unpleasant as, it, as that stuff is moving and building up pressure. So it's really not what a technician of a still is looking for, an active uh, wash. So the people here at the distillery let it settle for 100 hours. So that is really a very, very long duration for the wash. 
In the end, we do have about 8% ABV, and this goes off to the wash charger in the still room. So I'm here in the still room of Ben Riach. And as you can see, we have two spirit uh, wash stills and two spirit stills. Yeah, the wash stills are pretty big with 20,900 liters, but they're only filled up to about uh, yeah, 16,000 liters, which is about here. And uh, the thing is, when you have a watch still, you want to have it run about to where the, the watch glass is. So you have uh, a good amount of bubbling and boiling, but you don't have it bubbling over and clogging your condensers. If you look down here, you can see the temperatures and the pressure that is actually inside the still. It is now running at the very first, it was just started, so it is actually bubbling pretty high. But you can see it's, it's kind of up and down, up and down around the watch glass, so there's not much danger of it exploding. This one here is currently heating up and it's already at 80 degrees Celsius, so it should maybe start in a, a few minutes or a few 10 minutes to uh, have it boiling. The um, spirit stills with 12,000 liters capacity are filled up to about 9,500 liters capacity and are also run with a six hour shift. So they have a very good separation of alcohol and the outcome is about 69 to 70% alcohol. If you would go out that door, you would see all the condensers all lined up as the condensers are outside the building they're normal shell and tube condensers. The heating and the uh, pressure management in the stills is done by a computer. So the computer watches over uh, of how hot the stills are, but the measurements and the cuts, so when you change from four shots to center and center to feints, is actually done with an old four thighs spirit safe from 1975. So I'm standing here in one of the Dunnage warehouses. And this is the warehouse number 13, and it's a special warehouse. If you look around, there are many different cars. Here you have a, a Masala cask right left of me. Then in, um, behind that is a Ben Riach Oloroso sherry cask. So I don't know if you can read this, but Oloroso sherry is a fruity, nutty, uh, uh, sherry that has a really nice influence on whiskey. Uh, to the left of you, I have quarter cask. Quarter casks are refurbished barrels, but they're made smaller. So with 120 liters of volume, you do have more contact with wood. So it makes them a bit more intense. Then we have big sherry casks all over. Uh, left behind you is a port pipe and there are uh, more sherry casks. And there are somewhere around there are also rum casks and also Tokai wine casks, some French wine casks. So you really see there's a lot of cask variation going on. And this is the warehouse where the blenders and the warehouse manager actually doing their experimenting a bit. They're doing their cask finishes. So the cask finishes are just a few years for um, uh, whiskey to finish, so it's a bit quicker. So you have a lot of rotation here in the warehouse and um, you find out how the whiskey is actually reacting to different casks and special releases are released from here. So really interesting place. The bulk of the barrels are racked in the other Dunnage warehouses. They also have a racked warehouse, which is divided by a wall. So it's officially three warehouses. So this is where the bulk of the barrels are stored in there. They don't have that much variation in these warehouses. If you look over to that side, uh, you see a pallet uh, uh, wrapped in black plastic and blue containers. There actually um, is something called the vetted mold program. The Brindriach mold is so famously known for their maltiness, for their roundness, that actually international traders are buying this mold to have them in their blend. Yeah, but it's uh, as the Benria single malt is increasing in fame and popularity and a bit of price as well, um, the vatted malt program is a bit on the on downfall. So yeah, 
if you can sell your single malt, a single malt as a pure one, then you, you really don't want to have that vetted malt. But the people, the international traders really want to buy the Benriach malt because it's just a really good malt. Yeah, so much for the production. Um, this was it. And now we're going into a little interview where I taste a few of the whiskies. So I'm sitting here with Callum Purcell. You've been 10 years with Ben Riach now and you are the warehouse manager here. Yeah, pretty much. Thank you very much for having us here. No problem at all. Uh, lovely distillery and definitely a lovely warehouse. Well, thank you very much. I mean, uh, we pride ourselves obviously on, on our Dunwich warehousing, you know, like, a, you know, it does have uh, an extensive collection of interesting casks. Yeah, the, the variation in them, uh, that warehouse you just showed me, that is just amazing. Okay. It's just, it's just very nice how where you got all these casks from this is just amazing to me okay so uh what are we having today uh today we're going to be looking at some of the core range of ben Riech. Uh, we're going to kind of like uh, start off with the the 10 year old standard then mm -hmm. we're going to progress on to the slightly more sophisticated 21 year old standard and then to kind of like uh, you know keep everyone interested we'll, we'll give you a little introduction into our peated range with our 10 year old curiosities Okay, interesting. So, uh, ten-year-old uh, mm -hmm. is that forty-three percent? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. <clears throat> so, one of one of your bottlings when you first arrived at the company, or one uh, castings? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. The, these uh, the whiskies that are now going into the kind of like a uh, ten-year-old will be kind of like a uh, rather interestingly casks that I filled myself you know, so that, that's quite good to see the kind of like uh, the actual generation you know because you know in a lot of ways when you're working in warehousing you're only like a temporary custodian of you know what's there but to have seen you know something that you filled yourself you know be vatted together for a bottling is quite quite satisfying yeah, you have to be really consistent and work along with the company to see, yeah, yeah, see oh, oh, I know that cast of filled. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> mm. The 10 year old uh, is an excellent example of, you know, mm -hmm. a very pure and standard, you know, space side style. It's really fruity. You got a bit of pears yeah. in there. Yeah, the, awesome. the, the Benry uh, obviously has that great malt characteristic, you know, the, the sweetness at its core. And at 10 years old, it's uh, exhibiting a lot of the sort of like orchard fruits that you would be expecting, mm -hmm. as you say, pears and apples, a little bit of citrus, you know, like a, that slightly kind of like a zestier sort of style. Yeah, definitely. That zesty, definitely. And with the, with the sweetness in the background. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's that, the perfect sort of balance in Benry. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're getting that sweetness from the malt and the kind of like uh, the fruits coming through. From the maturation, you mm -hmm. know, you're also getting that lovely shot of vanilla that you're getting out of the bourbon cask, you mm -hmm. know, like, uh, so you're getting a very yeah. nice balance. Oh, it's a, it's still, a, it's still a light one, intriguing yeah, one. Yeah, it's a, mm. nice. It's a light to medium weight sort of like style. Mm -hmm. So, slanger. Slanger. Mmm. Mm. It's a very soft, delicate whiskey, mm -hmm. but it does still tend to have a great length on the palate. Mm -hmm. mm. And it's in your mouth feel it's soft and yeah, very almost a bit oily. A little bit. You're getting that lovely sweetness oh. up front, but then at the end you're getting that lovely little bit of spice that you're just getting out of the wood mm -hmm. as well, you know. Yeah. When you swallow it, you, you get the whole fruits, but now in the aftertaste, there comes that little bit of spiciness. Yeah. A little bit of oak coming through. Yeah, that's also what you want, that little bit of spice mm. from the, the oak. Mm. And I, oh, a nice fresh entry whiskey. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah absolutely. Just as I like it, yeah. So, um, as a warehouse manager, you do have uh, kind of different mash bills. You do have like an uh, unpeated version, a peated yeah. version, yeah. and now you do have a heavily peated version. So. Is that hard to manage? It's it's not uh, it's not terribly hard to manage because obviously we know what we've filled, yeah, and then obviously we we 
have documentation to keep us right. But I mean, a lot of the time you'll you'll actually know a lot of the casks yourself. You know, like uh, you know, having filled them, you, you you're familiar. And uh, a lot of the time, if you haven't actually filled the casks, uh, in my own particular uh, aspect, to the original wood, there's a good chance that you'll have vatted together some of the whiskies for re-racking. You mm -hmm. know, like because uh, we do quite a lot of work with re-racking at Benry. You know, we re-rack for the likes of the 10 year old, there'll be a small amount of that that's come from uh, being re-racked into sherry. You know, mm -hmm. a balance between Oloroso and kind of like uh, Pedro Jimenez. Uh, there'll also be a small amount of it that will have been re-racked into fresh virgin wood. You know, mm. so where you get that extra, that sort of extra vanilla toast, you know, and you almost get that creamy creme brulee kind of coming through. Mm -hmm. So it's got a bit of a even harder yeah it's, it's, it's a much yeah it, like, that, that's like, that's yeah. the sort of thing it's like mm -hmm. it's bringing out that extra spice you know mm -hmm. yeah extra the extra caramel wood yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and vanilla going on so um 21 year olds is that one of the the re -racks then yeah the, this 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 will involve you know your standard version of ben Rie, whereby mm -hmm. it's been kept in uh, bourbon cask but also to make this a, a far more interesting flavor profile, there's work that's been done where there will have been finishing work done in sherry, mm -hmm. but to take it on to a, another level from the 10 year old, the 21 year old also has kind of like a work where it has been re-racked into wine casks. And mm -hmm. I think that adds to the sophistication of the palate, you know, it is incredibly good. The wine, the wine re-racking, adds a, a really lovely dry sweetness and mm -hmm. also extra complexity on the nose. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You get that sweetness, it's, it's, it's a different kind of sweetness. It's a more sophisticated sweetness. Somehow it's still pretty light for a 20 year old, but it's, yeah. oh, it's complex. It's complex, mm -hmm. but on the palate it is extremely smooth and mm -hmm. the length is incredible but as i say that that introduction a little subtle introduction of that that wine that wine finish just adds just a, an extra dimension i think it's but it's it's so it's a little, little bit of grapey berries yeah, but it's, yeah. it's 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 still very smooth velvety like, yeah like yeah silken, it's incredibly or? smooth and um also oh. At this sort of point, Ben Riech is, is going from that, that fresher orchard fruits with the zestiness and it's now developing into that, that tropical fruits where you're starting to get your mangoes mm -hmm. and your bananas, you know, coming through. You're just getting that, that much more rich sort of feel of the fruit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's incredibly good. It is really, really good. I mean, this is this is your classic, you know, mm -hmm. after you've had your supper, sitting down next to the fire, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, just relaxing for the evening with this. Okay, so slender. Slender well. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. The softness of the mouthfeel. It's incredible, mm. and it's uh, immensely drinkable. Mm. Mm. It's a nice balance between bitter sweetness, flowers, a real sweetness, and wow, it's wow, it's complex, and even have a little bit of phenolic aftertaste. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what it's, that it's is. It's got it's got that mm. that extra richness coming mm. through from the wine, but the the wine finished tends to add that slightly drier kind of edge that's kind of mm -hmm. like uh, coming through. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, now we'll know what you mean with the drier edge, yeah. with, with the second sip. Yeah. I really got out the 10 year old and now, mm, yeah. And now with the, with the aftertaste, we do have a, oh, a dry, it has that's a, a dry wine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it, you're getting that coming through. Mm -hmm. But then it, it also leads to that incredible palate length. You know, it stays on your tongue for a long, long time, but without being in any way intrusive. You know, mm -hmm. it's just so well balanced. It's, it's kind of the woods and the, the finishes have all harmonized. Mm -hmm. And you're getting obviously a beautifully mature, you know, whiskey at 21 years old, you know, 
Ben Rake is really, really coming into its own. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, the 10-year-old is a lovely, fresh whiskey, you know, like a, and a, a whiskey you could drink every day, but I think the 21-year-old is, is it's kind of like you're keeping it for a, a slightly more special occasion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely not your everyday drum. No, it's no. It's definitely no. a... Oh, it's a, a really complex one. So this is this is when like uh, you know old friends have come round to visit you know mm -hmm. like uh, and you're sitting yeah. down and relaxing. And That's a company whiskey. Yeah, yeah definitely, <laughs> definitely. Mm. Oh, I love it. I really love it. So the Ben Riach um, had its own maltings. Yes. And um, the the peated is has that always been with uh, Ben Riach or how is the history with Ben Riach with the different Benriach, uh, of peat? Ben Riach are considered something of a maverick uh, distillery in Speyside, uh, mm -hmm. given that they were the first distillery, I believe, to do peated, uh, peated style. And uh, we have peated stocks going uh, all the way back to uh, 1972. Mm. And, uh, you know, some people sort of dispute the fact that, you know, Ben Rieck were doing peated as long as that. Some people are trying to say it's only since the 90s, but, you know, I can give indisputable evidence of the fact that <laughs> my uh, mother and father used to stay at number one Benry cottages just down there and uh, back in the 70s they said that you know when the the malt floor was working peat you could smell it down there you know like uh, you <laughs> know so so it definitely goes back to the kind of early 70s mm -hmm. so okay so that's that's cool that you have some some old old peated whiskey and some history with the whiskey all that I love it, I love it. So, um, the 10 year old cur Curiositas, is that a uh, peated or heavily peated? It's, it's peated, but uh, it's, it's interesting from the point of view that it keeps a certain level of freshness in the fact that not all of the whiskies that go into it are peated. There's mm -hmm. still some of the kind of whiskies that go into it that are just standard. Mm -hmm. So, I think that that adds. A, a lovely freshness to it, you know, in the same way as the, the 10 year old standard is quite fresh. The the Curiositas is really interesting from the point of view that the peated that goes into it is heavily peated, but there's a beautiful balance of freshness and sweetness from the kind of like uh, the standard bourbon stuff that goes into it. Mm -hmm. I think this is actually, you know, pretty much the best value kind of like a whiskey that we make mm -hmm. because it has such a, a complex makeup you know and and it's giving you that incredibly heavily peated style that you would be expecting oh. you know from an isla an isla malt you know so it's got all of that massive peat you know like you're you're you're, you're 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 at a fireside you know you you in fact you, you've almost got lumps of peat lying about you you know it's like <laughs> a so it's incredibly peaty on the nose, but you've still got that freshness and the sweetness coming through from the kind of standard bourbon, mm -hmm. you know, aged style. But then when you come to the kind of like uh, the actual tasting of it, you get that, that immediate peat bomb hit. But because uh, Ben Riech, the water from Ben Riech is such a pure mineral water source, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the finish is incredibly clean and inc incredibly crisp, you know, unlike mm -hmm. some Isla malts where by the, the water is actually affected by the peat also, you end up with a much heavier finish. So mm -hmm. with this, you're getting all of that peat power, but you're getting a much fresher, cleaner finish. Okay, I'm, I'm really excited. So I do get uh, definitely peat smoke, definitely. Oh, yeah. That's the dominant, dominant note here. But with a little citric note, yeah, bit of, you're getting it that. Sounds strange, but a little bit of a sea note as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's strange because we're in, we're not close to the sea, are we're, we? We're not. We're not. <laughs> yeah, it's still in there. It's a, there's a slight phenolic character, but nothing like you'd be expecting from some of the kind of like uh, yeah, the it's, it's a subtle phenolic character, yeah. definitely. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'm confusing that phenolic character with the sea. Yeah, well, maybe uh, <laughs> potential. Uh, but I love it. I love it. It's 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 fresh, mm -hmm. fresh smoke. I don't know how to explain fresh smoke. But yeah, uh, but uh, this this all always reminds me of you know like uh, you know campfires and that. You're just getting mm -hmm. that, that beautiful smell. You know like, uh, and uh, you're kind of here. I would say at the right time of the year because uh, I for some reason associate you know wanting to drink uh, peated 
whiskey with the winter season mm. you know uh, there's times when obviously when there's snow on the ground and that you know and a little sip of kind of like a peated whiskey you know it must remind some part of your soul of the kind of the idea of the campfire and that and you're and you're, 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 <laughs> you're, you're getting that warmth coming through you know like a mm. definitely definitely mm. nice slender slender Mm. Mm. So you've got that that initial peat bomb hitting you as soon as you kind of like a, you swallow, and then you're getting that midsection where it is still, you know, quite a chewy kind of a piece of peat there. Mm. But then, as it rounds towards the end. You're getting the the sweetness coming through from the kind of like the, the standard bourbon, you know. So you're getting some of that notes that you had on the ten year old standard coming at the the tail end, mm -hmm. but you're still getting that kind of like a, that peat feeling all the way through. Mm. It definitely reminds me a bit of that ten year old, the, yeah. the normal one. But yeah, the peat is dominant you know, it's, here. It's, it's massively so peated, you know, and it's it's actually you know it, it looks quite you know like. Uh, you know quite mellow when you look at the color you know but then you get that massive kind of blast you know like uh, a peat you know it's like it's it's more fresh mm -hmm. less sweet uh, than, than, yeah. the, than the normal one that's it it's strange for for peaty whiskey to be fresh yeah that's the, that's why i find the curiosity <laughs> is, is such a great whiskey and such great value because the complexity of the makeup, you know, like and the flavor profiles, you know, are, are incredible for just a ten-year-old whiskey, you know. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. I really like it. So yeah, the the Ben Riach brand has quite a big product range, and uh, so how is that going to be affected in the future? Are we going to see more even? Or I think I think uh, people who are familiar with uh, Ben Riach from when Ben Riach were an independent. Uh, under Billy Walker, we did have an incredible amount of uh, products on the market at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, to the point whereby uh, I think some people were thinking it was somewhat bewildering for the, the customer. Mm -hmm. So under Brown Foreman, they, they've, you know, rationalized the kind of like uh, the lineup a little bit, you know, so that now the, the core range will consist of the 10 year old standard, the 21 year old standard, the 10 year old Curiosity's peated, uh, the 21 year old Temporis peated, and uh, we've reintroduced the, the 12 year old Sherry finish because it was so incredibly popular, mm -hmm. you know, like with a slight tweak here and there, you know, on the original format. We have also the non age statement Heart of Space side, you know, as the introductory level, mm -hmm. and there will also be annual kind of like uh, selections of cask strength, uh, you know, single cask bottlings. Are oh, you going to continue that? Yeah. Nice, yeah, yeah. It's it's a bit of a if you have a, such of a brand, it's it's a bit of a hassle to to um, differentiate between the the malt heads and the beginners. Yeah, yeah. Beginners are just a bit too overwhelmed. With, yeah, yeah. What it, should I try? It can be a little uh, bit. But the malt heads just love the, the difference in the palate, so they can really get into the brand and find out what kind That's of it. special things you're going we're on with your. We're still we're still warehouse. working on quite a lot of different, you know, like uh, re racking programs and that. So. There is potential in the future for you know uh, other things and also the single cask bottlings will be you know a great way of keeping up with the kind of like uh, somewhat unusual ones like the marsalas and the kind of like muscatels mm -hmm. you know the rum finishes all these ones as you say that the, the malt heads can really get into you know like uh, but without you know perhaps kind of like uh, you know overwhelming the kind of market with perhaps too many as part of the, the, the standard range. Mm -hmm. Okay, so really nice, I love it, I love it. Great, great, great portfolio you got here. So thank you very much for, for the interview, thank no you very problem. much for, for showing us around and... Thank yeah. you very much for coming to Ben Reich and uh, you know like uh, anyone who's a fan and is willing to share you know uh, so their knowledge and their kind of experience of Ben Reich is uh, always welcome here. You know? Okay, yeah. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you found this video interesting and you have friends who also like whiskey, then please feel free to share this with you with your friends. And um, thank you for watching and see you next time.